Now, interesting you mentioned there the sports science factor. In, in your previous role, you talked to every organization. You had clients from so many different teams. So you, you probably got a good sense of lots of things that go on in different organizations. And you're able to maybe look and say, hey, because, you know, coaches always tell me, man, if you're not stealing ideas from the other guys, like that's how you become a better coach. Because yeah. somebody knows something maybe you don't. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. Do you feel that's an advantage you have maybe is that you you kind of have an understanding of what a lot of the other teams do and now you want to take your own belief system and incorporate it and if so how long do you think that takes to to really kind of interject some of the things you want and do you have a timeline on anything that you think is like priority number 1 or number 2 Yeah I mean I think that having been in the agent business and seen all the other organizations over a course of you know 11 12 years uh, it does give you an opportunity to see some things that are done really well by some organizations not all of them Um, and some do some really well and others do other things well so you're kind of you can pick and choose try to grab nuggets from the the good nuggets from the teams and, and sort of put that together and then on the agent side of things we were very proactive trying to do player development on our own we did we had some analytics we had uh sports science in internally at wasserman so we had a sort of a resource that we could go for that sort of stuff very innovative company so i learned a lot on that front so i think that i'm not rushing in and like creating departments all over the place but we are starting um we're gonna you know we're gonna have an announcement shortly on some analytics um which which is very exciting for us um, to get to get that going, um, and then you know the Oilers have one of the finest uh, medical staffs in the league, in my opinion. So working with TD Fours and his his staff and Doctor Nadu, like we'll we'll just kind of continue to build off of what they already have done. Um, they're very progressive, well educated, continue to educate themselves but there's ways that we can get incrementally better. So I think these are things that don't happen overnight. I don't have timelines for stuff, okay. but I, I do have a strategic plan that I want to implement. And it may take, you know, it may take a few months. It may take a year, but it's going to happen. You talk about how you, you had kind of an analytics department uh, at your agency and we've seen the evolution of it. I've talked to guys who are investing in guys who work independently, guys who work for certain teams and it's always evolving and changing. And, and some of them tell me, you know what, the best analytics in the game of hockey, there's still like maybe a 30% that's just unpredictable. There's yeah, you, yeah. There, you know, so you want to be as close as you can, but then you have to understand without driving yourself crazy that sometimes it's just out of your, out of your control. Yeah. I mean, I think, Analytics is a t- another good tool to use. That's essentially what it is. And if you're, if you have a toolbox and you don't have one part of the toolbox that's uh, you, you lost your one tool and you're not using it, like it's going to hurt you. So, to me, like get that toolbox full, use analytics, but you have to use all the other stuff that you know, whether it's watching games in person, using your own kind of sight and smell test of players, feel all the intangible things with players are very important. But what the analytics can do is you can it can drive you know you can build uh, programs where you you know drive focus on whether it's amateur scouting, pro scouting, player contracts, like you know using it to see when guys are at peak performance, all that sort of stuff that you can't do without the data. So like that's where we're going to use it. Um, but we're also going to continue to use like the traditional methods of like player evaluation because that that's not going anywhere. And then what about the business side as the CEO of the company? Obviously, you have a pretty good business background. I think you understand numbers quite well. And then, you know, negotiating contracts and sponsorships. Obviously, you did that with players. How much of it gets all encompassing as the CEO, right? Well, I'm CEO of Hockey Operations. Uh, and uh, and Jurgen is the CEO on the business side. He's been, you know, he's been with the OEG for a number of years. So he'll, he continues to do that. We We work closely on... I think a, a bunch of stuff. We okay. we've gotten to know each other a little bit uh, early on, and he's been traveling a lot, so I don't have to get into the weeds on the business side okay. too much. But they but you still they they, naturally they, yeah. interact. Yeah, yeah, they interact. Yeah, like, there's certain sure. times where you have to cross over. So yeah, you have, so you have to be we, we, you know we have our offices are right beside each other, and we'll I'm sure we'll spend tons of time together. 